Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're gonna to be doing a $1,500, wait for it, Intel PC build. And we were able to make this happen with a big thanks to Micro Center. So stay tuned for a little bit of an ad for Micro Center. So if you guys didn't know, we don't really live near a Micro Center. We're about two hours away from one, but because we love them so much and their amazing prices, we actually have driven up there a few times just to go pick out our own PC parts. They have a wide selection of PC hardware, whether you're building your very first gaming PC or you're somebody like us who loves PC hardware, you should definitely give your local Micro Center a shot. Check the links down below when buying the parts for this build. Special thanks again to Micro Center. And also Micro Center is here for you for essential technology that you may need to work and learn from home home in these trying times. For everyone staying at home, we know this is a hard time and social distancing can take an effect on you. Micro Center has a new online community where you can share your PC build with others and chat with the community members in the forums. This is a great way to connect with fellow PC gamers while adhering to social distancing. Use the link, sign up for their community and post your current PC build. Thanks again to Micro Center for sponsoring this PC build. Now, let's go ahead and put it together, shall we? So the process that we have picked for this build, it doesn't look like an AMD box. It's really weird because this is an Intel i7-9700K. And honestly, this does pair with like a Ryzen 3700X for honestly around the same price. So we're excited to give this a try because this is supposed to be better for gaming and we're gonna see if that is really true. Huge thanks to NZXT for sending this over. This is the Kraken or Kraken X53. This is a 240 millimeter AIO and it looks really cool. It has some, some glowing effects to it. It's a little bit expensive, you know, it's about $129. They have a few different models that are all kind of similar that are different price ranges, but you know, it's 240, has RGB, which we love RGB, and it's in ZXT. We really trust these guys. They make some really good stuff, so we're excited to try out this cooler on this Intel processor. So big thanks to Gigabyte also. This is the Aorus Z390 Ultra motherboard. This is a very, very, very high-end motherboard, and when I say very high-end, I mean like $230 just high-end. It's a really good-looking board. It's gonna be really good for doing all kinds of expansion projects and whatnot, but keep in mind, you could save about $100 and get a, a cheaper board. Uh, Gigabyte also does make cheaper ones as well if you still want to go with them. For the RAM, you guys know that we love Team Group. This is the T-Force Delta RGB. It's 16 gigs at 3200 megahertz. Really respectable speed, really respectable RGB. Looks very good. And also this stuff is just cheap. Usually you can get it for under $90 for 16 gigs. You really cannot beat that for RGB RAM. Now this is kind of a weird combination here. We're actually going Team Blue and Team... Rocking a Team Red GPU and we're rocking... <laughs> <laughs> Now this is kind of a weird combination. We're actually going with the Team Red GPU with an Intel build. But anyways, we have the XFX 5700 XT from AMD. This is a really awesome card if you want to save some money compared to something like a 2070 or 2070 Super, and you still get some great performance. Now this is the thick variant from XFX, which we actually used the 5600 XT model, and it actually performed pretty well. So we're excited to test this thing out in this PC build. Now Micro Center was nice enough to send over this inland 512 gigabyte SSD. This is an M.2 PC PCIe SSD, so it's gonna be blazing fast. 512 gigabytes is enough to get Windows installed and install a couple of games. And if you wanted to get a one terabyte drive, you most certainly could. But this is one area where we thought we could save a little bit of money, and this is still a really solid drive for the price. And also from Micro Center, they sent over their in-house brand Power Spec power supplies. Now we'll leave some other links down below. You can buy this from Micro Center if you want to, but if you don't have a local Micro Center, you may want to go with something like a Thermal Take power supply or something else off Amazon that's actually readily available. But this is a really awesome 650 watt unit. 80 plus bronze. We actually are going to be adding a pair of custom sleeve cables, which these are actually black, um, just to add a little bit of a cleaner design to this power supply. But um, really excited to use this in the build, and it'll be more than enough power to power this system and any future upgrades. And lastly, we're going to be using this beautiful case from BitPhoenix. This is the Dawn TG. Now, the big selling point of this case is this like RGB wraparound effect that you'll see here when we actually finish this build. It looks really cool. Um, there's full tempered glass all the way around this thing so Jackson's gonna have his work cut out for him with cable management but we're gonna make sure this thing looks super nice and it's gonna be a really awesome home for this really high-end PC build how we go ahead and put it together
now that we have this PC all put together, let's talk about those benchmarks real quick. Now, I only tested this PC in about three titles. We played Fortnite, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, and Overwatch, just to get a good idea of how the system performs. But honestly, I was not surprised with the performance numbers we got, and pretty much this thing can run any game you want to throw at it at 1080p high refresh rate. First up with Fortnite, this was a great, great performer. We were getting 200, 300 plus FPS, and that 5700 XT was definitely the bottleneck. You could go with something like a 2070 Super, 2080, or even a 2080 Ti with a 9700K, and with that configuration, you won't suffer any major bottlenecks with the 9700K. Now, the reason you might go with the 9700K over something like the Ryzen 7 3700X is if you are somebody who plays Fortnite or esports titles, because the pure IPC of boosting all the way up to 4.8 gigahertz and with a little overclocking, which we didn't implement, you can easily get this thing to 5 gigahertz. You can get way better frames and reach those 300, 400, 500 FPS marks that you may want to hit as a professional esports player, and that's why a lot of people still opt for Intel for their gaming PCs. Next up with Modern Warfare, we dove into a deathmatch game and got really good results on max settings, well over 100 plus FPS at 1080p. Again, lower settings, you can get well over 100, even 200 FPS and probably hit those 240Hz monitors if you want to. But the 5700XT was definitely the bottleneck in this situation, and we knew that going in. So you could go ahead and opt for a better GPU if you expect better results, and you can make this a really, really awesome gaming PC with an even better GPU. And the same thing goes for Overwatch, well over 100 plus FPS, no problems whatsoever and I just want to take this time to talk a little bit about this build and what you can expect in the future because really soon Intel is going to be releasing 10th gen processors so this is kind of just a uh, looking glass kind of build I don't know if I would really recommend going out and buying this stuff unless you can find a really good deal on a 9700k and a motherboard but we had a motherboard on hand and we wanted to give Intel a shot and their 9 gen stuff is known for being really good for esports titles so we wanted to put it to the test and we do expect to see 10th gen stuff in our office at some point in the near future so be sure you're subscribed if you want to check that out. But honestly, for an Intel build, $1,500, this is a really awesome system, and I highly suggest considering it if you are somebody who primarily plays esports titles and really doesn't dive into the content creation side of things. So how about we go ahead and bring Jackson back in here, and we can wrap this video up real quick. Okay, guys, so you just got to see some benchmarking on this amazing $1,500 Intel PC, and yeah, we said it, Intel, $1,500, amazing, all in one sentence. Now, if you're just looking to game, I can totally understand an argument for going with the 9700K, but do keep in mind, Intel is gonna be releasing some new processors here very soon, 10th gen, so if you're watching this video in the future, you might wanna save your pennies and go towards that instead of going with the soon-to-be outdated 9th gen processor, so that's something to consider, but overall, this is a great gaming system. Yeah, you're paying $1,500, but if you're someone who just games and wants to game a lot and really values Intel for some reason, you know what? The 9700K and the 5700 XT is a pretty good pairing because you're also getting a little bit of AMD in there even though we didn't go Ryzen. I'd also be interested to see too if maybe much like Ryzen with the 1600 AF, maybe something like the 9700K when 10th gen comes out will be you know, the $200 processor all of a sudden instead of like 340. So it could honestly be like the next Ryzen 1600 AF. So that's something definitely to consider. And if you are interested in purchasing anything for this PC build, links in the description down below. Big thanks again to Micro Center for helping us out with this PC build and sending over all the parts. So as always, don't forget, like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Goodbye. Bye-bye, bye-bye.